if you yourselves were about to express at this moment the one desire of your hearts, I mean that which was really and sincerely so, what would it be? Many of you would point, I have no doubt, to various things in which happiness is generally regarded as consisting. Such a situation, such an income, such family comforts, such temporal enjoyments, and so on. You would, you think, be well content with these. Some few, however, would say that the one thing they would desire is to be Christ's. This is a quote coming to you from the biblical illustrator. Now in this broadcast we are continuing the theme of resolutions in our new series entitled In the Beginning Was the Word. And in this particular broadcast we will be continuing the theme of seeking the Lord as we deal with resolution number nine as found in Psalm 27 4 which says one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Now I want you to take note of David's words as he begins this verse of scripture. He starts off by saying one thing, one thing above the rest, above all others, one thing which had been the object of my constant wish the ruling desire of my heart, the chief and principal thing, the thing that I placed everything else on a lower plane as of less importance to. One thing, my master passion, even though throughout life I wore many hats, I was in many positions, I was a shepherd boy, a renowned soldier, a ruler with great power, a father full of affection, but I had a master passion in my life. I had one thing, and here he's talking about how his longings were reduced to one, the whole force of his being concentrated upon a single aim. And he tells us, he goes on to explain what that is. One thing have I desired of the Lord. Here he sets his heart on the pearl. He could have desired a thousand other things. He could have desired rest from his enemies or safety, protection, or so many other things. But he said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. Now this is the language of decision. It's the language of preference. Now uh, we, uh, I, I can't suppose that uh, he had been able to say this always. We can't suppose that. There may have been a time when David said, many things I desire of the Lord. All of us have gone through that. And some may still be going through it. Where you're saying of many things I desire of the Lord. And just to give you an example of some of the desires that we come up against in life. What I'm talking about here. We're going to call the first one chance desires. And the best way to explain these chance desires are uh, of picturing somebody walking past a crowded store window and in that window you see all kinds of objects of desire and sweet and pretty things things that you desire and you you look in this window and you think oh I have to have that oh I'm gonna have to save up for that I really need that well this is what chance desires are 
These are just things that you get your focus on your eye and you think, I can't live without this. And then there are low desires that we face in life. They're low doesn't mean that they're necessarily sinful, but they are called low because they do not elevate. There's nothing exalting about them. And in this discussion of talking about David, that perhaps there was a time when he said many things, I desire of the Lord. But now he's saying one thing have I desired of the Lord. In this discussion, we come a, a, away with this statement. Life is a process of simplification. Here's David. He went through trial after trial. Battle after battle, attack after attack, and no doubt that after each trial, that God used these trials to minimize him, to reduce him, to simplify him, to show him, show him what really counts in life. And after all those trials, he has come to this place where he says, one thing have I desired of the Lord. And I think we could all relate to this. That, you know, after going through a trial of your faith in your life, that you have to agree that oftentimes this is the case. That you come out of that trial and you think, the things that I thought I couldn't live without, I can certainly set them aside. I don't need that in my life. Well, all it is is God using those trials to minimize, to reduce, to simplify our lives, to get us to the point where we say with David, one thing have I desired of the Lord. Charles Spurgeon said this, God judges us very much by the desire of our hearts. Why the desires of the heart? Because the desires are the aims of the heart. They determine its character. You know, a, r a real way to test somebody, whether or not they're a Christian, is by their desires. If you are a Christian, your desires should be spiritual. They should be fervent, constant, springing from the love of God, tending to his honor and glory, and they should be greater than any earthly desire. David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. And, but he didn't stop there. He said, that will I seek after. Here he shows us the method by which the desire is realized. That will I seek after. But there are two points that we want to keep in mind here. You know, there are many people, a great many people say, one thing have I desired. Yet they fail in the persistent continuousness of the desire. This word suggests here that there must be a continuity of desire. You have to keep that desire going. You have to keep it alive. You have to put a fire underneath it, a passion to keep it going. Secondly, David is t giving us a second point to consider here that he said, one thing if I desire, that will I seek after. You have to put action to your desire. There's the necessity of prayer and work. There are many desires that are unsatisfied because conduct doesn't correspond to the action. You can desire something all you want, but if you don't put action to it, you're never going anywhere with that desire. That will I seek after. Here you can see David's resolve. He said, I will seek after it until I obtain it. I'm resolved never to give it over, never to give up in my pursuit of it. I will persevere in prayer till I have prevailed. That 
will I seek after. Notice you can hear his determination, his resolve, but also what's behind these words is the supposition that there are going to be obstacles and hindrances, that there will be various and many obstacles to getting the desire of the Lord. Satan will seek, just as he did with David, he will seek to hinder you. And also, you have to remember that your own flesh, your own neglect, could uh, hinder it because of indifference, becoming indifferent in the seeking. That will I seek after. There will be obstacles and hindrances that will, will try to hinder you. Listen to what the biblical illustrator said. The one thing for which I long above all others is to be true and noble and like God. I want to be the best that God can make me. I pant to attain the highest that is possible for me. That is the passion of my soul for which I live and pray and toil each day and all day long. Let me ask you, do you want to be the best that God can make you? Are you panting to attain the highest that is possible for you? Is this the passion of your soul? Now David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, and here it is, the height of his ambition, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Here it is. He's telling us his desire. I desire the public worship of God in his sanctuary because that's where God granted his presence. And I also desire the inward union and communion with him. Here we find in these words that David desired above all things that his life should be spiritual, decidedly and supremely spiritual. He desired and determined to persevere in the worship of the living God. He desired to behold the beauty of of the Lord. He said, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I want to behold the beauty of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. Show me your glory, O oh God. That was his desire. And also to inquire in his temple. He wanted to learn God's will and ways. This was the one thing that he was after. The one thing. Now in closing, I want to leave you with an illustration, uh, a story or an account that I found in Spurgeon's commentary. Spurgeon gave this account. He said, in a garden at Mentone, there was a tree upon which that you can see at the same time oranges, lemons, citrons, and shaddocks. Now, these were all grafted into this one tree. The, and all the grafts were alive, but they were not all equally vigorous. And Spurgeon said, if I remember well, there was one fruit, it was the orange, that greatly predominated in fruitfulness. And then he made this statement from his observation of this tree. He said, the stronger wins the day. The more vigorous of the grafts, which was the orange, took sap to itself, but left the others to pine. And then he made this statement. One kind of fruit is enough for one tree, and one great object is enough for one man. Now I want you to picture yourself as that tree. And on your tree are grafted many desires. Now as a Christian, no doubt 
One of those desires is for Jesus, more of Jesus, his grace, his love, mercy, truth, spirit. But also on your tree are many other desires. Now, remember what Spurgeon said, the stronger wins the day. You have these different desires grafted into your tree. But the more vigorous of the grafts are, is, uh, will take the sap, take your very life, and leave the others to pine. So I ask you today, which is your stronger desire? Is it the spiritual or is it the physical, the fleshly, the carnal? The stronger wins the day. Whatever is stronger of your desires, that is the one that's going to go after the life. Your sap, suck the life out of you. It will take energy from you. It will take and leave the others to pine. So I ask you today, which is your strongest, stronger desire? Is it the spiritual or is it the physical, carnal, fleshly? Because remember, as Spurgeon said, the stronger wins the day. Our time is up for today's broadcast. But I encourage you to stay tuned for our next teaching as we continue our study of resolutions as found in the book of Psalms. This is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry, praying that you are transformed by God's word today. In Jesus' name, amen.